I'm going to try to take you through um, a case of someone with an anterior shoulder dislocation. Uh, what happens with an anterior shoulder dislocation is the humeral head pops out anteriorly and it bumps against the glenoid. And what happens is you get this big indentation on the on the humerus, which is called a hill sax deformity, which is here. And sometimes you also can get a, a major deformity of the glenoid surface, but this one looks normal. And this patient, after that happened, they had surgery, it looks like, where they had these suture anchors placed in their anterior glenoid, which is called a soft tissue repair or capsulorophy, to try to prevent them from getting a shoulder dislocation again. You can still see their hill sax deformity, but that must have failed. So they ultimately decided to do an additional bone reconstruction where they, they uh, when the soft tissue reconstruction fails, it's felt to be that maybe there's bone deficiency and so that they can augment the glenoid surface with some bone graft to make it kind of larger, a larger lip so it's less likely for the humerus to dislocate. And also to cover the defect in the hill sacs deformity in the humeral head, which also can play a role. So this uh, what happened in this case is they used a bone graft, which is this dense stuff, to try to augment the margin of the glenoid. And the purpose of the CT is to evaluate bone healing of the glenoid. So what was done? So conventional kind of CT, this would be our, our, our traditional thing where we include the whole view of the scapula, which is probably not necessary for this purpose, but it's, it's fine. Um, but there are some problems with this technically. So number one is, of course, we have metal. And so we've got some streak artifacts, which make things a little bit trickier. But the other thing, uh, other things have to do with what is the purpose of this study? The purpose of this study is to evaluate healing or non-healing or, or fragmentation of this bone graft to the glenoid bone. Okay, And so when you look at for instance, um, so when we look at, for instance, these images, or let me actually use the sagittal as an example, you can see the sagittals were appropriately done along what is basically the axis of the uh, glenoid surface. But there are a couple of problems. One is, in this case, unlike most of our shoulder cases, we're not really looking at the whole shoulder. We're looking at the interface of this bone fragment and the glenoid. So really we want images that are going to be orthogonal to that interface to get a good cross-section at that site. These are a little bit oblique to that interface. I would say the interface should be along this angle and in this case the angle is along the glenoid surface. It's an understandable um, thing to do but I want to explain why you would pick something else and I'll show you some more in a minute. Uh, and then the other thing is if you look at this reconstruction, both of these reconstructions, this and this, these are relatively smooth. These were done in the Siemens B40 reconstruction algorithm. And as a result, there's some blurring. There's some smoothing and blurring, and it's difficult to evaluate the bone-bone interface. And the reason we use B40 reconstruction algorithms typically is when you're trying to do some volume rendering. So this uh, person did have some volume rendering done, and that, in that you do use a B40 to help reduce noise, um, but uh, it's not helpful for evaluating the bone-to-bone -bone healing. So you want to use a sharper reconstruction, and I'll show you that in a second. While I have these here, though, I'll point out something else. So some of these recons are done in a way that uh, allows you to see the metal quite well, but no one's really interested in the metal here. They're looking at the bone, and specifically they're looking for the bone at the anterior margin of the glenoid in this area here and here. So the humerus being, being here is actually in the way. Humerus, in theory, ought to be cut out so that you can really look at the bone itself right here without it blocking your view. And then having this sort of semi-translucent bone does not help you evaluate the bone interface. So anyway, let's go back. I was pointing out the, um, the relative smoothness of this recon and the, and the angle and compare that to this side where we have this was a B70 reconstruction at 0.6 millimeters, and B70 is a sharper reconstruction algorithm. It allows you to see the interface of the graft and the bone much more clearly. Now I've angled these, these planes in a way that is the typical 
kind of angle to the surface of the glenoid. But because we're really evaluating the interface of the graft in the glenoid, I want to make something that's orthogonal to that. So I would change the axis probably to something like that. Okay. And then what you'd get from that in the sagittal plane is a nice sharp appearance, sharp look at the way the graft looks compared to the native bone. And here I think you can still see a lucency separating these two and indicating that there hasn't been any bone incorporation yet. Okay. There are also a couple of loosened pin tracks in this, but we could see fragmentation on this view as well. Uh, and similarly, when we want to look at the axial images, we want to look really through that interface, not at this kind of oblique angle to the interface. So I would change this to that kind of angle so that we're going to get some slices that are going to go right through that interface. So let's go back to the axials. And let me move some of these lines out of the way to see better. And you get a nice, real sharp look at that interface. And that's what we're going for. So this is a little bit different than what we're normally doing. But you can see that using B70, very thin sections, and reformatting, doing MPRs along the axis of the expected interface between the glenoid and the graft will help the surgeon and help the radiologist evaluate graft healing much better than our standard techniques. Okay.